Chloe, welcome back. Thank you for taking the time aside to talk to me today. No How problem, are you? Not too bad. And yourself? I'm well, I'm well. Today we're talking a, about a really important topic that we sort of touched upon very briefly in our last discussion. Mm -hmm. And it's about self-care. Yes. Particularly now in this time, I think it's more important um, with everything that's going on, particularly with Corona and lockdown. I can imagine it will be really stressful for parents um, being at home, homeschooling, mm -hmm. and no doubt the challenges that Corona is bringing. A very challenging time and very important. So maybe yeah. I can begin this discussion with a statement and I'd be interested to see what you think. Mm -hmm. So is... Some people say self-care is indulgent and um, selfish. What do you think about that? Um, yeah, look, it's definitely something I've heard um, being uttered um, around, whether it be with clients or just, you know, around in the community. I, I, I do think it gets a bit of a bad rap at times, um, you know, but I, I think self-care is often confused with being indulgent where, you know, people with lots of money can go and have bubble baths and, you know, lie, lie in, in a nice bath with a nice um, glass of champagne and have a massage and that's what self-care is. And, um, you know, while that could be a form of self-care for some people in some circumstances, that's not really what we're talking about when we're talking about it from a therapeutic point of view. Um, you know, self-care for us is really more around um, what keeps us healthy and what keeps us on top of it. Um, you know, and that's really what we're referring to when we, when we say self-care. Um, you know, that uh, it's about the simple things. So, you know, reaching out and, and staying connected with your relationships with parents, neighbours, kids, partners, that type of thing. It can be, you know, just having a routine of getting up, brushing our teeth, washing our face, um, eating good foods and moving exercise, things that make us feel good in our body, that make us be the person who we need to be for the other people in our lives. That's really what self-care is about, what we're referring to. Um, and so unfortunately, you know, this myth that it's indulgent I think sometimes turns parents or, or people in general um, away from something that can really help, you know, their physical health, their emotional health, and also that of their families as well. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk a little bit more about the barriers and, and what gets in the way. But I'm interested from the perspective because there's always the analogy that I think about when you think about the tank and, mm. and, you're, here you are happily going along and, and you keep moving in the tank, the, the petrol in the tank slowly, slowly keeps coming down and down. And there's pro possibly warning signs along the way that you need to refuel the tank, but you ignore them and then, and then at some stage the tank is empty and you're completely <laughs> exhausted. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering what are, what are those signs? What, what kind of things um should we be mindful of that maybe are there to tell us oh i think it's time to stop slow down and really mm -hmm. take good care of yourself mm -hmm. yeah you're absolutely right I, I think you know um we use analogies of of, of the tank um and I, I hear it a lot when i work with with parents where oh don't worry about me i just need to like get my kid going and we put all the emphasis in them and our needs come later um and so it's really important to actually you know be aware of what are the signs within our own bodies and our own behaviors and thoughts because it, it, it we do need to take care of ourselves before we take care of others um and so those sort of signs we're looking for is changes in our sleep and eating habits if we're finding that you know we're having disrupted sleep or we're eating less or a bit more perhaps late at night um headaches dizziness upset stomachs um feeling really unhappy prolonged senses of feeling unhappy um feeling guilty you know i think a lot of parents can um <laughs> resonate with that one 
um, feeling vulnerable, anxious, lonely. All these sort of emotions are, are, you know, can be part of our normal everyday experience. But when you're experiencing them for a prolonged sense of time, when that is perhaps the overwhelming or dominating emotion that you're feeling throughout the day, that's probably a sign that perhaps something's not maybe quite right. Um, other physical signs may be, you know, concentrating difficulties, um, feeling withdrawn, moving away from, you know, the relationships and the people that you would typically interact with, um, feeling irritated more quickly than you would expect, things that may annoy you, really start to annoy you now, um, crying or angry outbursts, you know, having less patience, I guess, than you typically would. Yeah. I think sometimes, and maybe more often than not, parents will often say, well, I don't have time. Where do I find the time? Mm -hmm. I've, got, I've got, you know, so many kids to look after, um, a house. And, and it's true. Like you could, you could argue that. You could say it's hard to find time in the day for self-care. But do you, do you think that it does take an awful amount of time do you think like how do you how do you find the time and how much time is do you really need are there are there simple things that um you can do to clear space in your day do you think like to actually put that time aside for yourself yeah definitely look it's definitely um a, a, a comment that we hear quite a lot of it's just there's not enough hours in the day um, and when I do get the time, I'm, you know, bloody exhausted at the end of the day, so let alone trying to do something for myself. Um, but really what we're looking for is small incremental moments in our day as much as just brushing your teeth is. So we're really talking about a few minutes a day. Um, that's all that's really needed for us to feel somewhat human and somewhat more in touch with what's going on for us. Um, and that might mean, you know, I know, I know of some, some people that may wake up 20 minutes before the kids do, yeah, because the house is really quiet and they can have that tea and they can just sit and reflect on, you know, what their intentions are and what they want to do for that day. Yeah. Um, it could just be a few minutes like that. Um, outside of that, it could be, you know, as I said before, it's, it's moving around, going for the block that more than five to 10 minutes. Um, that could be, you know, eating healthy foods and making good choices around, you know, what you put into your body. Um, it could be things like just avoiding screen times before bed. Yeah. Um, you know, limiting alcohol and, and coffee intake after a certain time. Um, it could be just saying no to things rather than over committing and trying to be superhuman with the 500 things that we have to do between homeschooling and carrying our work and paying the bills and getting dinner on. Yeah, very true. What would be your um, top five tips for or things to do um, that are great self-care activities or... Um, or strategies do you mind yeah. sharing yeah sharing no, your no, top no five? Um, I guess personally my top five that I find really useful is staying connected to others um, you know making that making the point of having that phone call reaching out to mum and dad cousins neighbors friends um, you know mother's groups all those types of things um, staying in touch really helps um, because it normalizes the experiences you're going through you can have a bit of a giggle at the end of the day um you know and, and you can relate to someone on, the, on that perhaps that adult level <laughs> you know when you've been doing nothing but play school all day sometimes it's good to connect with another adult in that sense and talk about something else um so reaching out is a really good one um trying at least to get a good night's sleep um you know that's a really good one um i i definitely notice a difference in my ability to do the things I need to do throughout the day if I have a good night's sleep. Um, and I guess the other ones I do is, you know, um, making a to-do list. So I write down the different things that I have 
to do and it feels good to one not feel so overwhelmed by the, the 101 tasks I have to do so I can feel okay this is this is the plan for the day um, but also there's a sense of accomplishment at the end of it as well you know by you know crossing those things off um, yeah and I, I guess for me as I said you know moving eating eating the right things also helps um, but I guess the big one of all is just really being kind to yourself yeah um, recognizing that I'm going to have um, better days where I'm feeling on top of it and everything's fantastic and look at me go and then other days where I'm, I just maybe not have my, my stuff together so much very true and we talked <laughs> about we also talked about uh, last time about the importance of self-compassion how mm. you're right being kind and treating yourself the way you treat your best friend or the way you right. would treat yeah. someone you loved so that mm. you would you know you treat yourself no differently mm -hmm. mindfulness is also um very important and the sometimes a, a good strategy that we use in mindfulness is focusing on the breath Yes. So I know you've got a little activity for us, which doesn't take very long. It's called box breathing. Mm -hmm. Can you just, before you take us into that exercise, can you talk a little bit of, about mindfulness and why, why breathing? What, what does it do? What kind of benefit does it have uh, for, our, for us in terms of our well-being? Yeah, sure. So um, mindfulness is, I guess, um, a offshoot um, from meditation practices um, but there isn't any I guess spiritual or religious connotations associated, associated with it although for some people it might um, and what it's about is really training the brain to be conscious of the thoughts that we're having and to bring us into what is called the here and now yeah um, and so, you know, quite often I could be having this conversation with you, but I'm also thinking about, you know, what I need to pull out the out of the freezer for dinner tonight and I've got to, you know, make myself a cup of coffee and, and our mind can be going at, at, at different rates and at different paces a lot of the time. That, that's, that's quite normal. That's quite human. And what mindfulness is, is practicing bringing your awareness into how you're feeling right in the here and now. Um, yeah. And it does so by concentrating on your breathing, by taking what we call deep belly breaths. So from the diaphragm itself, to be able to focus one, your thoughts, but also to uh, regulate your body. Why that's important, um, what we know with research is that by taking in big, deep breaths, it can um, stimulate your parasympathetic nervous system, which is just a really big fancy way of saying it's the part of your nervous system that allows, it sends messages to your brain to calm down. Very good. Very, very yeah. good. Very important. Yes. So with that in mind, mm -hmm. shall we, shall you take us into this activity, which I can. Yeah. yeah, sure. So this is a particular type of breathing exercise. There's plenty of them out there. Um, you know, there's just uh, other breathing exercises, progressive muscle relaxation and others. This is just one of, um, but I do think it is probably one of the quickest and easiest to kind of get your head around. So this is called um, box breathing. Um, and as I said, it's, it's just a simple, very quick technique to manage stress. And basically what it is, so I often will ask clients to sit very straight in their chairs. So put your backs back and your, your neck. Um, you can close your eyes if you like. Some people feel comfortable with that. Um, and what I ask you to do is to firstly exhale for four seconds. So that's to breathe out for four seconds. And then to breathe in and to hold that breath for four seconds. Yep, and then to exhale. 
and to breathe in for four seconds. And if you can, breathe in again for another four seconds. So you should be really pulling on your, your diaphragm muscles, almost you can feel it in your belly. And then breathe out for four seconds. And that's really it. You can carry this on for, for a minute or two. Only really needs a minute or two to start to feeling the effects of feeling a little bit calmer. Um, you should feel your, um, your heartbeat and your, and your breathing starting to slow down. Yeah, very relaxing. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? And it didn't take very long. No, no. And I, I guess it, it's, its beauty is in its simplicity. Um, that it is like, at the end of the day, it's breathing. It's something that we do all the time, every time and don't really think about it. Um, but if you can find those small moments of solace, as I said, you know, for parents, sometimes it's, you know, getting up a little bit earlier or sometimes hiding in the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, but finding those moments to take some solace and, um, you know, just focus in on your breathing, you will start to notice physical, physiological effects on your body. And um, from that space, you're more equipped to handle the challenges that life throws you. Definitely. And, and also when, when we're under a lot of stress or pressure, quite often we don't realize we're not breathing properly. We're often yes. holding our breath in. So yes, definitely. It's a good release when you're doing the deep breathing. Yeah, yeah, definitely. A lot of the feedback we hear is that people don't realize how tense they are in their shoulders and in, in their arms. When they are that tense, they don't realize how hunched over or how shallow their breathing is because it, it's yeah. automatic. Um, you know, we're in that sort of stressed out state. We're just surviving and not really thriving. And so this very short exercise kind of brings you back into your awareness around that, for sure. Definitely. Thank you for sharing that very simple but it, very powerful um, exercise. And I know you're going to be putting a, a more mm -hmm. information in the description box below. So yep, I can do that. People listening today, please do check um, the, uh, the description box below for some uh, more resources that Chloe will be sharing with us. So Chloe, on to end this talk, uh, I always ask if there's one important message uh, that you want to leave people with, what would that message be? Uh, yeah, I, I think similar to, to last week on the theme about self-compassion. I know I sound like a bit of a broken record at this point, but self-compassion, I think it's, it's really become fundamental in the, in the times that we live in. Um, Pay attention to, to how we talk to ourselves. Um, you know, give yourself the, the pep and the advice that we would give our, our best mates, um, that we're all doing the best that we can. And, you know, that, that sometimes is, it's, it's just enough. So, um, yeah, um, I guess a, a big, a big round of applause really to all the parents doing it doing a tough day um you're doing the best that you can definitely thank you chloe i really enjoyed um our talk today no problems stay safe you too see ya <laughs>